Okay, this is where we left off yesterday. I got everything cleaned up, the things out of the way. So I think what we're gonna do is go out to the other barn, get some of the material we're gonna use so we can make sure we got things spaced around just right, we'll bring out the dehumidifier. This is where we start to use the TLAR method. For those of you not familiar, that is an acronym for that looks about right. Um, a lot of this is gonna become what you need and what you want. Uh, in my particular case, uh, my boards are about nine feet. This is uh, about 11 and a half, almost 12. I wanted four feet inside. I figured my stack would be about three, three and a quarter by oh, two or three feet tall. Um, that give enough room around it for air circulation to put the two fans I'm gonna put in this one, uh, as well as my heat source for setting the pitch. So it's about four and a half by about uh, 11 and a half is what it is right now. So let's go get some wood. If, you saw, if you've seen the other video I did uh, about my lumber, um, this will look a little familiar to you. Um, the material I'm using to build the kiln and the 2x4s and stuff, most of which are uh, recycled from the house we took down. Um, a lot of little scraps. These are some of the bigger ones. I'm going to get up here and grab a couple of 12-footers, and uh, we're going to use those uh, for lengthwise down the top of the kiln. But for now, I want to get out a few sticks of lumber so I can lay things out and see how things are going to go. Now that we got some wood, let's see how this lays out. I dug down a little farther in the stack to get some of these big thick ones because they are the reason for this uh, for this firing of the kiln. And right there, you can see. Bring this up to the camera. What what we're trying to set? These are the pitch pockets that we need to get the pitch to solidify in. And really the ones on the outside aren't the ones I'm worried about. It's the ones you can't see that are going to weep. So let's see how these lay out. If we have a couple of big wide ones here. One like that. And another one like this. Gold. That's plenty of room around the sides for air to circulate. And my stack would be slightly wider than that because some of my narrow boards that I'm using for shelves in the pantry are a little bit wider. But that and some fans will work good. Now let's bring the dehumidifier up and see how it fits. Perfect. That's what uh, that's the way it'll pretty much lay out, and then I think right here next to it, I'm going to put a little heater unit that will supply heat in and around the boards. Um, yeah, and this is where we get into the parts where uh, you know you're trial by error, experimenting. You know where can I put it? Where I'm putting heat in, but it's not going to catch things on fire. Um, I only need to bring the internal temperature up to 165, 170 degrees, but the unit itself will be hotter than that. I've considered trying to use uh, just light as opposed to a heater unit, and uh, I'm not done considering that yet. What I'm going to do next is uh, move some of these things out of the way. Now we're going to start putting verticals, just a few of them, back here. Before I start framing this up, I wanted to let you know kind of what I'm thinking about here. This is the insulation that I'm going to be using, and it's also going to form the wall. Um, this doesn't have to be structural in any way other than to just hold the, the foam up, at least in my, my instance. This is one inch foam board with uh, aluminum foil on one side, and it's rigid enough that I can stand it thusly on each side. I, I don't think I'm going to make it four feet tall. Um, I think I'm going to only make it three. I think that's plenty. Um, it's enough to handle the humidifier without a problem, and that's quite a bit of lumber rack in there when you get it in. 
So I think I'm going to stay down around three feet, and these one foot sections I'll be able to use on the top or in other places. So my framing is only enough to hold this together. The other thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be screwing these two by fours together, but I've considered nailing them. You know, if I took out the framing nailer and just started banging these things on here, this job would go really fast. Put these on the outside, insulation sits down on here, we're golden. But I want to be able to pick this thing up and move it with a tractor. And I know that when you do that, things tend to flex and move around a little bit, and nails will work loose rather, rather rapidly. So I've decided to uh, pre-drill these and use screws. Uh, I think it'll give it uh, more longevity. So if you're not planning on moving it, or it's a one-time thing, bang it together with some 16-penny nails and call it good. Okay, so I've made the door that's going to go on the end of the, of the, dehumidif of the kiln where the dehumidifier and the heat source sit. I call it a door, but it's actually just going to be screwed on to the end because once the box is closed, that, it's not something you're going to want to get in and out of a lot because you'll let the warm, dry air out. So anyways, here's a piece of foam that's cut. This will fit uh, in that hole. And then out of some scrap one by I had, I built this frame. And uh, I used pocket hole screws to uh, hold it together. And then as you can see, I had a little piece of plexiglass. I uh, put that in because I know curiosity is going to kill me. I'm going to want to see in and make sure everything's looking like it's behaving right. You know, who knows what I'll be able to tell that I want to be able to see in. So, Is it necessary? Absolutely not. Um, the door will just be screwed on. You can see some holes here. See how this works out. If I don't make any major modifications after this run, then I'll probably do something different with studs and maybe wing nuts or something like that because drywall screws will eventually wear out. I'm going to do something similar to this uh, for the big door as well. I don't know if I'll use one by or if I'll use two by four, um, but this would be the same basic principle. Foam will get attached to the button cap screws that I've, or button caps that I've replaced the nails with screws. And this is the scrap I cut out. I put a little bolt on it just so I had something to hold on to. So I could put it in there when I wanted to get it out. All I had to do was look at that. So. Anyways, that's the, uh, the end door. And I'll do the, do the side door next. 37.4. That's not so bad. You guys still paying attention? All right. We got the end door done, and this is the large side door. I tried to keep it as light as possible. Well, I can still figure it out. I got a couple of blocks down here on the bottom to set it on, and then each end here overlaps on both sides, so it can't fall in. I built it in place and have taken it out to add a couple of braces left to it. It's got a little bit of a warp in it, as you can see by what it's doing there. But like I did with the end door, I'm going to attach it with screws to make it stay. And then this will get a panel of foam attached to it, just like the other side. So once that's done, the box is pretty much done. All the doors are done. The top, all I'm doing on the top is I'm going to lay some OSB cut to size across the top just for structure. Probably won't even screw it down. And then I'll lay foam. I have one more full sheet of this. I'll lay foam across it and then some scraps. Um, I, I'm not in any way unhappy that the top will be put together with some scraps of foam. Um, I want to, I'm, I'm concerned that it's actually going to get too warm when just the humidifier, dehumidifier is running. So I want to be able to take those out and, and help it adjust. So I'm going to mark this piece of foam, cut it, attach it. Got a little scrap down here on the side to put in. I'm going to put a scrap across this header here um, of foam. <clears throat> And then I'm going to go out in the other barn. I think I've got some 
the foam stripping they put down under sill plates on houses. I think I have enough that might go across the top of here. Uh, whether I need it or not is a whole other story. But anyways, that's where we're at. That's it. <clears throat> I think I'm going to put some aluminum tape over these edges just to clean things up a bit. And that one last strip. This is just to clean up the corner. This is uh, aluminum sealing tape I used before. Um, this is actually leftovers from the building of this barn. 